and we welcome you to Rustler Field on the campus of Golden West College as today SportsNetUSA.net presents Golden West Football. The one and two Rustlers take on the two and one Renegades from Bakersfield. A great Saturday afternoon to you wherever you are, Rashawn Haylock, alongside Ryan Osborne and our entire cast of SportsNetUSA.net characters. The Rustlers back in their Kelly Green uniforms for the second consecutive Saturday. They'll be kicking it off to the Renegades. Kick is taken by Cam Roberson. And he gets it across the 30. And that's where Bakersfield will start first down and 10. So what are you gonna see from these Renegades, Ryan Osborne? Well, Josh Medina, he's the quarterback. Completing 52% of his passes this season, 219 yards, three touchdowns, but the running game is what's most prevalent. prevalent. This team rushed for 352 yards last week in a 56 to nothing win over Santa Monica. Medina out of the gun on first and 10, and he hands it off to Alicia Ortiz, and that Rustler defensive line is stout. Oh, Wolf Retzloff leading the charge there as the gain of zero on the pickup there by Elisha Ortiz. It'll be second down and 10 from the 30. And you talk about this running game by Bakersfield. They're actually one of the top running colleges in the entire state right now with 5.1 yards per carry from Ortiz and 5.5 from Jones backing him up. Check over to the sidelines, does Medina to get the play. Shane Jones split out to the bottom of your screen. He's a tailback, but they'll split him out wide. Medina going back to pass. He's gonna tuck it and run, and this is what he does best. The quarterback can run two. He picks up 10 there, and a first down for Bakersfield on the second and 10 pickup. And you talk about Medina taking off. He has over 70 yards rushing this season as well. Has had some ball security issues. Two fumbles on the year, one loss by Medina as he looks over to the sideline for the play. We'll set up the lineups for you momentarily. Here's Medina back to pass, going to let it go. And there's Jones, and Jones makes the catch. Tackled inside the 10. On the coverage there for Golden West, Carlos Crawford. But a huge pick up there. And you look at that pickup by Jones. And they go hurry up. They give it to Ortiz. Ortiz makes one cut. And he goes down inside the five. You love the double move there by Jones as he's running up the sideline. He fakes like he's going to go in on the in route. And that's what throws Crawford off. And all of a sudden, he's right behind him, 10 yards away, looking at a wide open reception. 66 yards on that pitch from Medina to Jones. Ortiz picked up three, second and goal from the four. And nice tackle in the backfield there by the Rustler defense, VJ Malo. The freshman out of O'Day in Washington. 12.40 left in this first quarter, just underway, but a big time throw there. Longest completion of the season for Medina. 66 yards to Shane Jones there utility back, if you will. Third and goal now from the six. Medina, he can run, trying to buy time, and he throws it out of the back of the end zone. So after that big gain, Renegades unable to find the end zone. So on fourth down, they'll send out the kicking unit. You're looking at two straight weeks for this Golden West defense that they had a ball inside the five yard line and they were able to make the stop. Excellent point there by you, Ryan Osborne. Happened last week against West LA right here at Rustler Field. It's Nathan DeJager and his kick is up and good. 23-yard field goal puts Bakersfield on top, three to nothing. 12:06 left 
in this first quarter. Rashawn Haylock, Ryan Osborne with you here on SportsNetUSA.net. And while we have a moment, let us remind you that Golden West Ruster football right here on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim, where service and parts is open for your convenience seven days a week. Miller Toyota of Anaheim, located at the 91 and Euclid. Go ahead, give those guys a call. Stop by. They'll take care of all your needs. That's MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com. You talk run, 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 and this Bakerfield offense hits you over the top with a big-time gain, 66 yards from Medina to Jones. Keep in mind, Ryan Osborne, this team had just 16 pass yards last week. Total for the entire game. They pick up 66 there, home run ball, and you figure coming into this game that may that that maybe they thought they could catch the, the Ruster defense off guard by doing so, and they were able to do so. As Dwayne Roper runs underneath this one, he bobbles it, but the fortuitous bounce goes right back to him and barely picked up anything there on that return. Nice job on the special teams there by Bakersfield. And we're going to get a flag in the backfield as Roper tried to cut back to his right. Daniel Kraske and LeBrayvon Austin, two of the Renegades to get to Roper first. Our officials today, Shane Smith, he's our white hat. The umpire, Charlie Chastain, head linesman, Dan Kaminsky. Line judge, Fred Hamasea. Field judge, Kent Bukara. The side judge, Steve Pollard. And the back judge, Dwayne Bergman going to be a hold against the Rustlers and talk to John Shipp, the offensive coordinator, prior to the game. And he was saying, you know, these are the things that we just can't do. Rustlers, 18 penalties last week. They'll start this drive first and 10 from their own five yard line. And looks like a fumble on the exchange there. Kalbacher falls on top of it, but some miscommunication there on the run, looking to go zone read. And you have some ball handling issues between he and Tavon Valdez. Russell's recover, but moves them even further back. Alex Bolden, one of the defensive ends for Bakersfield, got into the backfield and just pushed his offensive line and back into the handoff. Kalbacher on second and long, short completion. Barely some breathing room up to the five yard line. Braylon Mouton there on the reception. Abdiel Richards was draped all over him. Injuries on the offensive line. Adrian Montez, Jacob Beckler did not practice this week. They're going to give it a go, however. Montez in there at left tackle. Kobe Clayton, the left guard. Beckler, the center. Dennis is Ofa Galilo, the right guard. And Spencer Blake, the right tackle. You heard from Valdez. You heard from Mouton. Ben Ratzliff. And Sashi Penn, the rest of the wide receivers, is Kalbacher, Cox and throws on third down. A flag comes in as that ball was out of the grasp of David Atencio. And if it does go against Bakersfield, it would be against Stephen Marks as he comes across the middle of the field. Penn tries to free himself up, but Marks ends up grabbing a little bit of the jersey. So an ineligible downfield against the Rustlers. It's a tough jump there for Golden West. You get that penalty off of the kickoff return that pins you back. And you just aren't able to recover with that fumble right away. So a dangerous position here for Kenny Fisher. His heel just hugging the end line. Is able to get off a beautiful kick, however, and running under it is Roberson, catching it on the run, makes a spin, and look out, Cam Roberson, one of the most explosive players in white today. Nice return up to the 25-yard line, but there's a flag back at the 30. That was a 15-yard return if it stands. 10-29 left here in this first quarter. And you look at Roberson as he ends up picking that ball out of the air. He didn't have it secured until he was about seven yards upfield. But once he did get past that first line of defense there for Golden West and Ryan Reigns, he had a good 15 yards after he passed Reigns. A free acreage that he can move up. 
So the ball moves back to the 45 yard line. It's a spot of foul penalty. So five yards behind where Roberson made and began his initial return. So the Bakersfield offense will go back to work. First and 10 from the wrestler 45. Medina back in there. Baldwin with a nice rush as Medina throws on the run incomplete. Intended wide receiver there was to Carlos Frazier. Beautiful job there by Elisha Ortiz picking up Baldwin on the outside as Baldwin was trying to work his way through the backfield. Ortiz just steps to his right and steps in front of Baldwin. Bakersfield coaching staff to a man feels like this Golden West defensive line going to provide the biggest test they've seen so far this season. Here's Shane Jones. And Jones, so far not giving this wrestler defense high marks at all. He heard him on the pass game earlier. Picks up five there to the 40-yard line. Brings up a third down and five as we approach 10 to play in this first quarter. Three to nothing. Bakersfield on top in the early going. Ortiz is the deep back. They roll the pocket again. Medina looking, looking, throwing in and out of the hands of Jones. Incomplete. So interesting situation here. Do you keep the offense on the field or no? Instead, they're gonna they're gonna punt it. And they have a big weapon. Perhaps pound for pound, the best player on the team may be that young man wearing number 10, getting ready to kick this ball, Carson Olivas, the punter. Chris Saylor has him number two in the class of 2019 on his list of punters. And he is certainly a weapon for Bakersfield. He gets rid of this one. It's a high spiral kick, but he might have got too much of it as it gets into the end zone. Not going to do much for the net, which was something that Olivas came into the season really, really going after. Wanting to lead the state in net this season after doing so a year ago. 9.36 to play in the first quarter, and the wrestlers will have it first down and 10 at their own 20. And a lot of times people underestimate the impact that a punter can have. If you're pinning the opposite team back inside their own territory and giving them terrible field position to start off drives, it helps your team throughout the rest of the ball game because you're able to hold them back whenever your defensive front goes out there. Valdez in there. Directly behind Kalbacher, four wide, four bow, high snap. He's going to have to juggle it, catch it himself, and just slides at the 15. So he loses five. And this Russell offense can't even get started so far here today. And that was one of those high snaps that we saw from last week. And it goes over top of, Cal of Kalbacher, who's not a small guy. And yeah, he's not. 6'4", 225, Texas born and bred. Austin, Texas native. Second and 15 from the 15. Valdez goes in motion. They go to a little misdirection. And the pass is caught with the Bakersfield defense right on top of it. So five yard pickup back to the original line of scrimmage. That was Mouton again on the catch. And you wonder when Bra Braylon is really going to get going. We've seen spurts from him so far this season. Remember, he was shut out in the opener against Fullerton. But expect with Kalbacher being back in the fold, huge numbers from Braylon Mouton. But maybe that's more of a credit to this wide receiving core. You got guys like Sashi Penn, Atencio, Ben Ratzliff, enough to go around. Third down and 10 from the 20. Kalbacher steps up. Kalbacher in trouble. He gets tripped up at the 20. Alex Bowden there, the sophomore out of Fresno, Washington Union, to stop Kalbacher in his tracks, but there is a flat. So it's going to go as a hold against the Bakersfield defense, which makes it a first down for Golden West. Can't have that if you're Bakersfield, a gift for the Rustlers, however. 
who have not been able to show much here offensively to start this game. You talk about drive impeding penalties that we've seen from Golden West over the last two weeks. On the other side, that's a deflating penalty if you're a defensive player. A lot of motion for the Rustlers. Under eight to play, play action. Nice catch by Mouton on the slant. Inside Bakersfield territory. He gets it up to the 47 yard line of the Renegades. Nice pitch and catch there from the Texas Connection. Abdiel Richards was the first person that Mouton ends up going right past. Richards tries to anticipate Mouton moving towards the sideline, but Mouton just hops right over top of him. Valdez behind Kalbacher, who's in the pistol. Three wide in the tight end, RJ Sylvester. In the flat, Atencio needs to make a man miss and does. David Atencio. Ahead to the 40-yard line, he gets out of bounds. Close to the first down marker, picked up eight there. And you notice the plays that are getting Golden West a lot of yardage here on this drive. It's a lot of out passes, allowing the wide receivers in Atencio, in Mouton, in Penn, to go out and have wide open space to move upfield and allow their own field vision to help them. Second down and two for the Rustlers from the Bakersfield 39 yard line. Shane Smith and company say hold everything. So that penalty is going to go against Sylvester, lined up in the neutral zone. Not often you hear that against the offense, but got to be better than that. Sylvester will go out. Sashi Penn will come in to replace him. Valdez still in there at quarterback. Last week we saw each quarterback get two possessions each before being replaced. Not sure if that will be the case today. What was a second and two is now a second and seven. They roll the pocket and Kalbacher over the head of Atencio. Atencio, I don't know if he ever picked that ball up. Atencio never saw it. Atencio was supposed to go up five yards and go out to the sideline, right hand side. But instead that pass goes about five yards beyond where his route ended. 6.01 left. First quarter, Rashawn Haylock, Ryan Osborne here with you. Ed Ford manning the controls. They line up Roper in the slot. Empty set here on third and long. Atencio makes the catch and seven gets seven plus a couple more. Enough for the first down as he slides across the 35 yard line. Ruster's moving those sticks again. So we're seeing some flat patterns here by these wide receivers. Haven't seen a whole lot of that so far this season. Definitely didn't see much at all last week against West LA as we approach five and a half to play. Well, you look at how the drive and the entire game started against West LA. It only took two plays for Golden West to get into the end zone. A pass to Sylvester and then Valdez taking it in from the 18 yard line. Ben Ratzler split wide to the bottom of your screen. Darius Maxwell in the slot goes in motion. Kalbacher looking up the far sideline and has RJ Sylvester. And whoa, Sylvester comes up a little lame at the end of that play. He picked up the first down, but he's going to have to step out of the ball game as he hobbles off, not wanting to put any pressure on that right leg. Sylvester gets it up to the 15 yard line. So First and 10 rustlers there deep inside Bakersfield territory. Under five to play in the first. Dwayne Roper getting the carry. If I'm not mistaken, that's the first run play we've seen so far from the wrestlers this afternoon. There was the attempted handoff inside of the five yard line, but that was it. Second 
Second down and eight from the 13. Kalbacher gets rid of it, has a man in zone. Touchdown, Rosslers. Braylon Mouton, the Texas connection gives Golden West a six to three lead. Rashawn, you look at that beautiful connection between both of those Texas guys. Kalbacher lets that ball go even before Braylon Mouton starts to go into his route. Braylon Mouton ends up going up five yards and just turning around. The ball is already right near his hands. He gets it right into both, secures the ball, and a touchdown for the wrestlers. I mean, he had to because there was pressure right up the middle in the face of Kalbacher. He had to absolutely get rid of that ball when he did, and he was able to do so. Fisher, and that's a low snap. And Fisher just falls on top of it. Special teams woes continue for the wrestlers here in 2018, so the score remains 6-3. to 3.59 left here in this first quarter. Rustlers take the lead here at Rustler Field. Don't forget, for those of you who tune in to SportsNetUSA.net, a lot more football coming up here this afternoon. Specifically, the two-time defending state champions, Fullerton College Hornets, who are going to be down at Southwestern. And that's a team in Southwestern moving up from the American Division into the National Division, having their first chance at the national lineups, and yet still 3-0 to start the season. But once again, that's going to be coming up here on SportsNetUSA.net. Ortiz and Roberson back deep to receive this kick from Fisher. It's a squib kick, going to be taken on a hop by Ortiz at the seven. Yes. Yes. Ryan Reigns there on the stop on special teams. Had some help there also with Chris Figueredo. So Bakersfield will start first and 10 from the 13-yard line. That last drive for the Rustlers capped off by a Braylon Mouton 13-yard touchdown reception from Bo Kalbacher for Kalbacher, his seventh touchdown pass of the season. Mouton touchdown grab number two. Has the Rustlers on top, six to three here as Medina goes back to work on first and 10. Delivers outside and pass is complete there to Roberson, but Picks up maybe one yard. Nice job there by Crawford. Or check that Cyrus Collins making this stop there for the Rustlers. Rustlers today without Jason Fuga. And of course without Keon Craig, who didn't play last week either. Craig out for the season with that torn LCL. Fuga left the game last week with an ankle injury. Didn't practice at all during the week as Ortiz goes up the middle to the 30-yard line. Brings up third down. This Bakersfield squad was a team that has been advertised as a running-only program, having a quarterback who has less than 90 yards on average per game in the air, but yet they haven't been shy about passing it here in this first quarter. Now talk to Jeff Chudy in his 15th season at the helm of Bakersfield before the game. And you know, I said, I've seen your team in the past. You, you weren't always this run dominant. He said, look, it's as simple as this. Five, six, and 22 are our best players. We got to get the ball in their hands. Well, here's six, that's Jones, but he's tackled for a loss by the freshman out of Orange, Cyrus Collins. Rustler stopped the drive there, brings up a fourth down. Five is Elisha Ortiz, six is Shane Jones, who just got that last carry. He can play running back or wide receiver. And Cam Roberson, number 22, is a threat in the return game as well as split out wide wide receiver, but they got to get the ball in his hands. You talk about getting the ball in, in their hands. They go to a wildcat formation here in this first quarter. So here's the ever dangerous Carson Olivas to punt. Specializes in flipping field position for Bakersfield. Gets a leg into this one. Fair catch called for and made by Atencio at the 35-yard line. And with 1.50 to play, the Russell offense will return to the field with a 6-3 to three lead. 
Looks like it's going to be Kalbacher leading the offense out there once again. So this will be his third drive. Last week, remember, they went 2-2, two and two, Kalbacher and Nathaniel Espinosa. John Ships today earlier said we'll kind of see how it goes. A lot of this is about feel. And you could argue that first drive really wasn't much of a drive for Golden West. Pinned deep in their own zone. Roper in there now at tailback. Four wide receivers for Kalbacher on first down. Play action and over the head of Sashi Penn. This defensive line is a good unit. Led by Ricky Liang Wai, sophomore bounce back out of San Jose State, wearing uniform number 91, Holden Williams and Devin Zinn. Linebackers, James Thomas, Jalen Simpkins, Mario Solorio, who's a good one, and Alex Bolden. In the secondary, Abdio Richards, Jeremiah Johnson is out, as well as Damaris Heron. So a couple players out for Bakersfield in that secondary. So they'll go with Richards, LJ Early, Sean Stevens, and Stephen Marks. As Roper gets the carry and he's able to pick up a couple, brings up a third down. That's just the third time that they've tried to run it here in this one. And with number 91 on that defensive line, it's someone that this Russell offense definitely has to pay, pay attention to. Where is he at? Where is he lined up? Because he can be very disruptive on that defensive front for Bakersfield. Third down and call it seven. Ball at the 38 yard line. Kalbach. There's 91. We just mentioned him right on cue. Ricky Liang Y picks up the sack. This is a Bakersfield unit that doesn't get to the quarterback often. That's just their sixth sack of the season, but a big one as it halts the Rusters' drive. And you see the experience there from Kalbacher. He just ends up taking that hit. Rather than trying to release an ill-advised throw to the outside where he had no one open, he ends up taking the hit. Yes, they lose yards, but they also don't lose the football at the 30. That's experience for you from the sophomore quarterback. They bring pressure right into Fisher. But he's able to get it off, and there's Roberson. Takes it at the 25, a little dance before being taken down at the 33 yard line. Eight seconds left here in this first quarter from Surf City USA. There was a baseball game going on right behind us earlier today. Wrestler baseball team getting some work in. But all eyes right now on Rustler Field in this football program. Trying to pick up win number one against an upper division team this season. They lost two Fullerton in the opener, surprisingly lost in week two at San Diego Mesa. The win last week against West LA, an American division team. So one that you can argue they should have won. It's Medina going to throw it. He got hit as he threw, so a wobbly one, but caught. Coming back for that one was Ortiz right near midfield. Austin Kramer was the one on the coverage for Bakersfield, or excuse me, for Golden West. He never turns his head around to locate the football, and it easily lands in the hands of the receiver. That was the last play of the quarter, and a weird one at that. But after one, Golden West six, Bakersfield three. As you're watching Golden West Ruster football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock here alongside... Ryan Osborne, Ryan is wrestler offense, kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. They showed they could put a drive together if they didn't harm themselves. But this Bakersfield offense, reversely, they showed some things that maybe you didn't think they would show, and that's namely in the passing game. Yeah, and they haven't been afraid to toss it downfield. Normally what you see is these rushing teams when trying to open up the rushing lanes, they go for five and 10 yard patterns. However, Bakersfield has three times in this first quarter, they went for the long ball. They weren't afraid to toss it downfield and Medina, even though he was about to get decked on that last throw, he still puts it up in the air for a gain of 21. Russells are two for four on third downs in that first quarter. 
They ran 15 plays, 13 plays for the Renegades. Bakersfield with 90 yards, Golden West with 71 yards of total offense. First play of the second quarter is an incompletion. Seventy-five pass yards for Bakersfield. Golden West is coming with a blitz up the middle. Fifteen yard, fifteen rush yards. Rustlers minus ten rushing yards in that first quarter. Quick pass out to Roberson. Crawford was all over, but can't make the tackle. And Roberson's able to get close to a first down. Third down and four, Bakersfield from the Golden West 44 yard line. Ortiz is the back, they send Roberson in motion. Medina gonna let it fly, complete to Roberson. And he makes the catch while falling out of bounds at the 40. He got right at the sticks there. So Miles McCord was there. Looked like he nearly was able to dislodge the football there, but nice job by Roberson to hold on to it. Fresh set of downs for Bakersfield. First and 10 from the Golden West 40-yard line. First down give goes to Ortiz, and a nice job by Coos Ford meeting him in the backfield. Kramer came up the sec from the secondary to provide some help as well. Always good when your corners can tackle. And Coos able to get there as well that time. Loss of two on the play. Second down and 12, Bakersfield. Little screen pass, Shane Jones breaks the tackle, and there goes Jones. And us being in the booth, we're somewhat close to the defensive coaches for Golden West. We can see their reaction after that initial missed tackle. It's off to the races. We talked about it over the last three weeks combined for Golden West. You have to wrap up on that first contact or else big plays come up just like that from Jones. So first and goal from the two, they give it to Ortiz and Oradondo is there to get him around the waist. So a second and goal for Bakersfield from the six. Ortiz the back. Medina. Looking for the fade there, incomplete. And that ball had a wobble to it as it was going to the left hand corner. Ends up going right over top of Just, the hands of the receiver. Justin Harrington, the intended target there. Third and goal. Scurrying onto the field late is a Darien roll. Five on the play clock for Bakersfield. A lot of miscommunication there, so they just burn a timeout. First charge timeout for the Renegades. Comes with 11.56 to play in this second quarter. And if you it's been big plays in the pass game for Bakersfield. Indeed, and it's really punished Golden West 
we just mentioned it a moment ago, though you have to wrap up on that first tackle. If you're going up for that first tackle and you're within the first three yards of the line of scrimmage, that feeling of importance is heightened because it was just one line of defense there for Golden West in front of Jones. And as soon as Jones burns past that first guy, all of a sudden he has an extra 40 yards that he can absolutely burn down to the inside, inside of the five yard line. For Golden West, you have to make sure that you get as much contact as possible on your guy. Bring him to the floor at all costs. Russell defense came up with one goal line stand earlier in this game. Gonna try to come up with another here on third and goal from the six. They send Jones in motion. They come back to this near side for Ortiz, but he can't turn and reach the end zone, so he steps out of bounds. Right at about, let's see where they mark him at. They mark him at the four yard line. Nice job there defensively by the Rustlers. They cut off his angle there, been able to get into the end zone. That brings him a fourth down. And enter to Jager. Golden West got close to blocking the last one. This one from 21 from the left hash. And it's on to McFadden and good. So we're all tied up here at Rustler Field. Golden West six, Bakersfield six, 11.28 to play in this first half. Rashawn Haylock, Ryan Osborne here with you. Let's remind you that this game on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Miller Toyota of Anaheim, they have all kind of deals for you. Parts and service always available for you seven days a week. Make sure you reach out to the fine folks at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. They're located on the 91 and Euclid, or you can reach them via the web at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Dot com. Russell defense is held strong deep inside its own zone, but have to be able to eliminate those explosive plays in the pass game. It's been a couple that have been the difference that have allowed this renegade offense to be able to get into striking distance. As the wind begins to pick up here, Darius Maxwell and Dwayne Roper back deep to receive this kick. Antonio Garcia gets a leg into this one and Maxwell will run under it, takes it at the seven. Darius Maxwell across the 20 and down at the 23 yard line. Special team stop made by Bryce Underwood. So Bo Kalbacher will come back out there. First and 10. Rustlers from their own 23 yard line. Swain is the new back. Kalbacher coming up this near side. What a tremendous grab there. Coming back and getting it is jo Jonathan Earl. Abdiel Richards was on the coverage. And again, a cornerback who just doesn't turn back for that ball as he gets beat inside. Nice throw there from Kalbacher. And Earl making the adjustment. Gets it up to the 47 yard line. Make that the 48. Pick up a 25 on the play. First and 10 rustlers from their own 48. Roper eating up in the backfield. Shooting straight through the gap was Solario. One of the inside linebackers for this unit. He ended up just walking 
right down Broadway. He came on a blitz. No one picked him up, and Solario, six foot, 218 pound sophomore out of Delano. As you were saying earlier, Rashawn, Bakersfield only seven sacks if you include that one this season. Loss of six. Timeout taken by Bakersfield. 9.59 to play in this second quarter. Coming up here on SportsNetUSA.net, we already mentioned Fullerton College football. That's going to take place later this afternoon. Also join SportsNetUSA.net all season long. East LA College, LA Valley, Fullerton College, and Golden West College. All four teams being hosted here on SportsNetUSA.net. A lot of home games on tap here throughout the rest of the remaining schedule as we watch on as both Golden West and Fullerton compete in the national, including newcomer East LA College. Just into the national division, already having some success, got their first national division victory just last week. Here's a second down play, looking for Earl again, and he can't come up with the catch this time. Reached out for that one. Goes right off of his fingers. Brings up a third and long. And you look at that catch attempt there by Earl. He's already kicking himself on the sideline because that goes off the fingertips and then to the floor. And those are the types of balls that you end up thinking about before you go to bed. It catches up with you. Third and long. Call Bacher. And this one tip drill intercepted. Picked off by LJ Early. Renegades will take over at their own 44 yard line. And that's one area that Golden West had done a pretty good job of over the last two weeks is making sure that they kept the ball. However, on that one, Kalbacher ends up just sending a low pass that pops straight up into the air and it's a layup for Bakersfield to take. So Bakersfield now trying to capitalize off the Rustler turnover. First turnover of the game for either team. They go empty set on first and 10 from the 45. And incomplete. Medina here this afternoon. On all his pass attempts, though he has connected for some big yardage, it looks like his pass attempts going through routes are just a shade off. On that one, it ends up landing about two to three feet in front of his receiver. That was just five yards upfield. Second and 10 from the 45 and a flag. There's a rustler down. Can't quite see who it is from here. Injury timeout on the field with 9.38 to play in this second quarter. That last penalty was against the Renegades, so that pushed them back to the 40. Second and 15 when play resumes. But that is Baldwin Wilson, who is down at the 40 yard line. Sure, you can probably hear the breeze at home, but down on the field earlier, it was pretty hot. Forecasted to be in the high 80s to 90s here in Orange County. And Wilson getting helped off by the training staff. Max Perez, the backup linebacker, also coming out there to help him out. 
but he's he's holding this right hamstring area. Here's a second and 15 play. They find Roberson. He slips through one tackle and another, but just goes down at the 40. So no gain there, but it was an amazing effort there by number 22 in white. And that's two more broken tackles that you can add to Bakersfield's total here in the first half. You get a sneak preview there of why, you know, he's called the most explosive player on this team, Cam Roberson. The wrestlers got a tackle. That's been an issue for them to the point to this point in the season. And you've seen there a couple of missed tackles. You saw on the last drive the catch from Jones, he was able to break a tackle and get deep inside Rustler territory. Rustler's got to do a better job of wrapping up and taking guys down to the field. And Nick Mitchell and his staff have been harping on this team about that. All squared here, second quarter, 9.15 to play. Ortiz is the deep back. They send Roel in motion. They try to come back with a screen this side and unable to make the catch is Ortiz as James Baldwin the third putting a tremendous amount of pressure on Medina there. Brings up fourth down. So Olivas will be trying to pin the Rustlers deep here once again. Atencio. Backpedaling now to about the 20 yard line, waiting to receive this one. Fair catch made at the 19 by Atencio. I mean, this kid has a big time leg. Big time leg. When you look at his form, he ends up just exploding through the football. At the college level, you don't often see guys actually follow through after their kicks. That's something that he pretty much specializes in, and it's gotten him a lot of success at Bakersfield. And you hear about all these recruiting websites, and whether it's the 24-7, the rivals, whatever. Anything related to special teams, kickers, punters, long snappers, it's Chris Rubio, or Chris Saylor and, and, and Rubio. The Rubio Saylor camps, they have them, and they rank all of the specialists as Nathaniel Espinoza is into the game for the first time, finds Maxwell, tries to get around the corner. And they rated Olivas the number two punter in the class of 2019. He was at a camp earlier this summer out in Sun Valley and participated pretty well. But he ended up getting a ranking higher than he thought he would get. And once he saw when the rankings came out, he said, oh, we might have something here. And he was certainly a weapon for this team last year that was inept offensively. This year, much of the same on second and five. Espinosa quickly out, Maxwell again. And here's the speedy Maxwell. He can run at the 40 yard line. And out of bounds at the 44. You see those flat passes working out once again for Golden West. He got them a lot of yardage on their second drive in the first quarter. All of a sudden, you go out to Maxwell on two straight plays, and Bakersfield, they think that with Espinosa in the game, they can bring everyone up to the front line and stop the run by Espinosa. In doing so, they leave the wide receivers open, and it allows Maxwell to have a lot of room to run on the left side. 20-yard pickup there for Maxwell. First down and 10 from the 44. Espinosa's completed his first two passes since coming off the bench. Make it his first three. Is Valdez on the screen. And there goes Tavon. Upended at the 45 of Bakersfield. But enough for a first down. And he had some space, Ryan Osborne, if he would have came out here to this near sideline. And you mentioned that. It was just an absolute lane down here. Why you ask? Because both safeties had gone to the left side. If you're looking at it from Golden West perspective, they all went to the left-hand side. And it was wide open for Valdez to try and take advantage of. First and 10 from the Bakersfield 44. Swain back in there at running back. He takes it on the end around, and that play never, ever got started. 
Bakersfield all over it. Gabriel Maldonado leading the charge there for the Renegades. But Swain having some footing issues as he was in motion, coming out of his break, he nearly slipped, and then he took the handoff from Espinoza and nearly got tripped up there. Unable to get those feet churning, he loses five on the play. Second and 15 from the Golden West, pardon me, the Bakersfield 49 yard line. Espinoza out of the pistol this time. Pulls it out of the belly of Swain and that one thrown low to pin, caught right at the sticks. It's gonna be a flag on the far side of the field. I thought that one may have bounced before it got to pin. They get Alex Bolden for being off sides. So give the Rustlers the five yards back that they lost on the first down play. And so it'd be second down and 10 from the 44. Earl still in there at wide receiver. He's made some pretty good grabs today or one tremendous catch today. Atencio in there as well as they go trips to the top of your screen. Espinoza still barking out instruction with four on the play clock. Finally takes the snap, going to throw it deep downfield. All oh, diving, catching inside the 15. Second time that we have seen Earl go against Richards, shove him out of the way at the last second, grab inside position, and haul it in on a pass that's about to hit the turf. There is a flag on the play. As you said, Ryan Osborne, pass interference against Richards. That is declined, gonna be a first down for the Rustlers. They mark them down at the 16 yard line. 28 yard pickup and I tell you, Jonathan Earl showing a physicality that we have not seen from him so far this season. Looking really special at wide receiver. Espinosa looking special under center as he dumps off to Valdez. A nice little cut there, Valdez still on his feet. So this is one of those rare plays in football where you see a running back lose his balance, get hit, but the direction of the hit ends up allow, allowing him to regain his balance as Valdez gets bounced to the outside and goes around the numbers and picks up a gain of eight after that. Espinosa's completed his first four drives, four passes on this drive, pardon me. Here he is now doing what he can do so well, that's scrambling. But barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. No game. Play number nine of this drive for the Rustlers. Third down from the 16. Espinoza looking for Maxwell. And that one batted away by Fano Maui. The flag. Flag's gonna go against Bakersfield as they get a roughing the passer call. Espinoza got decked around two to three seconds after he let go of that football to the outside. Now Golden West with 3.45 left on the clock and there's gonna be a flag called against the Bakersfield sideline. Wow. Someone on that Bakersfield sideline must have said the magic word. You know, I was talking to Shane Smith before the game. He's our white hat today. 
he, he talked about how officials don't really want to, obviously they don't want to eject guys. And you got to be really careful when throwing those flags that are really going to have an impact. He said, unless somebody does something or says something egregious, usually try to hold off on those things. Well, he threw it there. First and goal for the Rusters. And the run is stuffed. Valdez tried to break free, but unable to escape the grass there. Uh, Alex Bolden getting in the backfield. And about halfway through that run, a flag was thrown from the back umpire. So hold against the Rustlers. Moves this one back to the 13. So second and goal from the 13. And these are the penalties that just keep John Ship up at night. Three and a half to play in the first half. Coming up at the half, it'll be the Ryan Osborne show. He'll get you through all the action today in the SCFA. And update you on the latest SCFA SportsNetUSA.net poll as Maxwell catches and hits immediately in the backfield. That play went nowhere in a hurry. Maui once again getting there and making the stop. Second and goal. Clock still ticking down for Golden West. Looks like the wrestlers content on letting the clock run down and just eating the timeout here. The timeout comes with 2.30 to play in this second quarter. Bakersfield sideline upset. They get an unsportsmanlike conduct. Makes it first and goal, Rustlers from the three. Ensuing play, Rustlers get called for a hold, takes them back to the 13, and then a couple of negative plays now makes this a third and goal from the 17 yard line. Second and goal, pardon me, from the 17 yard line. They got two on the box down there on the Ruster sideline. Also some news making shockwaves throughout the SCFA. Tim Burns, the head coach at Fullerton College, on leave. So the reigning back-to-back -back national champs without their head coach for the second consecutive week did not know at this time last week that the Rustlers were or the Hornets, pardon me, were just manhandling Santa Ana in the key to the county without its head coach. Second and goal from the 17 as we get back to this one. Espinoza rolling the pocket. Flag comes in. Espinoza throws it away. And it looked like it could be another hold. Holding against the Rustlers. She's looking at a second and goal from Mid City. One more, we may be in Westminster, Ryan. <laughs> well, I mean, when you go back to back holds on a single series, and it takes you from the three yard line all the way out to now they're at the 27. This is back breaking for Golden West. They had the ability to not only take the lead, but score a touchdown going into half. And they still have that chance here, but it's a lot harder than the three, the three yard line. Second to go from the 27. Espinosa hit as he throws. Liang Wai and Bolding both getting in there, applying the pressure to Espinosa. Brings up third down. 
And the thing for Golden West is that when Espinoza got hit and was letting go of that throw, Maxwell was, was wide open on that far sideline, so he would have had room to run as well. Valdez in there at tailback. Speaking of Maxwell, he's in the slot, the bottom of your screen. Espinoza on third and goal, lets it fly. Too tall for Braylon Mouton. Brings up fourth down. And it looks like Golden West may just stay on the field with their number one squad. I think you said it right, Ryan, back breaking. Go from being on the doorstep, possible six, you got three in your back pocket to now being out of the money, if you will, potentially. Russ is going to burn their second time out of the half because of 2.09 to play. Six to six. Pretty evenly contested matchup so far through this one. Penalties galore on the Rustlers side of things, which has helped this one become even more even. Bakersfield staff really concerned Really wanted to see how much they could play with this Golden West team. Golden West, meanwhile, allowing this Bakersfield team to continue to hang right in there. Not saying that the wrestlers should be blowing out Bakersfield. This should be a lopsided game by any stretch of the imagination. But Golden West making it a lot harder on itself than they should. Coming up at the half, Ryan Osborne. Get you all the scores and updates from around the SCFA. And our latest sportsdebusa.net California Community College football poll. Still 209 left in this first half, though, as I know you're all champing at the bit to get your info from Ryan. Send the field goal unit out. Anthony Trevino to hold. Fisher will be kicking it. This one has enough leg, but wide left. An earlier 44 yard attempt, no good. We're still tied. Earlier we talked about what that does for the momentum of Golden West. Having those two holds and backing yourself all the way up to the 27. Now you turn it around and look at Bakersfield. Okay. Not only did you stop Golden West at the three yard line, you forced them to try and take a field goal. They missed the field goal and you have it at the 27 with two minutes, two seconds on the clock and you still have a chance to take a timeout going down the field. If you're Bakersfield, you have confidence and momentum behind your back. Here's Medina on first and 10 from the 28. They find Roberson in the flat, Roberson. Climbs across the 30 to the 32. One forty-five and counting. Second and six from the 32. Medina going to keep it himself. Nice leg tackle there by Al Dappa at the 40 yard line, but a first down for Bakersfield. And everyone thought that he was going to end up giving it off to Ortiz. Faked out about three different guys on the defensive line for Golden West. 115 left, first and 10, Bakersfield from its own 40. Shane Jones there, trying to get a head start. Dude, you might be the fastest guy on the field. I don't know if you need a head start. You see, what it was is he was in a race, and he thought he was in the outside lane, and he needed a couple extra steps to stay with the inside lane. Under a minute to play. First and 15 from the 35, Medina on the keeper. Al Dappa comes up with another tackle. We have a renegade down on the turf. And 
Rashawn, earlier you were talking about how Bakersfield hasn't been shy about going deep into the air. We just haven't necessarily seen that dominant running game. They have been successful in getting the ball upfield with their running game, but we just haven't seen them be dominant as advertised. And, and you'd think, coming off 352 yards last week, that they would bring that here. But I think they, they had a tremendous amount of respect for the Golden West defensive line. As it's Joshua Ubeda, the right guard, being helped off the field. But to Bakersfield's credit, So Shane Smith alerts us there will be a 10 second runoff. So it'll be 33 seconds left in the half. Now after the injury, Bakersfield not electing to take a timeout. So if you don't take a timeout, you get hit with a 10 second runoff. So Bakersfield offense does average 196 pass yards per game to their credit. And here's Medina, but that's what they do well. And that's what Medina does best. He's a runner. He happens to play quarterback and got another injury here on that offensive line of Bakersfield. And that looked like the right tackle, Jason Marshall, one of the returners on that unit out of Baltimore. He looks to be in a heap of pain. So the game clock goes to seven and six tenths now. Another 10 second runoff. Interesting strategy here by Bakersfield. I mean, you have the timeouts, you can't keep them. Very, very conservative here. Now a trick snap is taken by Martin, the tailback. And that wasn't intentional, folks. Medina with his arms up in the air as if to say, what's going on here? They weren't trying to catch Golden West off guard. They simply were just trying to let the clock run out. And the center, Blaine Brown, rifled it back there. And heads up play by Martin to be able to catch that one. And able to pick up a couple. Wacky, wacky ending to this first half. As the teams will take it into the locker room, tied up six to six. Not necessarily your most conventional ending to a first half, considering that, again, they had that, that timeout that they could have used. They had 2.02 on the clock, and yet they allowed the clock to run itself out. You figured they'd take a, take some time, take, take the time out, I mean, run, run some plays, but I guess if you're just content on taking any anyway, then I guess there's no point, right? Very interesting. Not sure if I've seen that before, but Jeff Chudy, 15th season, definitely has a right to operate his program the way he likes. So the teams are taking it into the locker room, and we'll take it to a break. Halftime here from Rustler Field, Golden West 6, Bakersfield 6. Coming up on the other side of the break, you'll hear from Ryan Osborne. Get you all caught up on all the news and notes, scores around the SCFA. And he and Ed Ford will talk a little California Community College Football and the latest SportsNetUSA.net poll. More to come here. Halftime in Huntington Beach as you're watching Golden West Wrestler Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Bakersfield getting set to kick off for Sean Haylock, voice of the Golden West Rustlers. Coming up here in just a moment as the Bakersfield Renegades are currently tied with Golden West at six, coming out of halftime. Here is the voice of Golden West Rustler football, Rashawn Haylock. Thank you, Ryan. Second half kickoff taken by Maxwell inside the five. And Maxwell with a speed burst. Darius Maxwell loses the ball. Bakersfield fell on top of it. Then Golden West 
And now there's just a mad scrum. Renegade certainly were the first to it, but couldn't come up with it. Official signal, Rustler football. My goodness, Ryan Osborne, ball security issues for Darius Maxwell on kick returns. He's explosive, but we've seen him do that too. That was Daniel Kraske for Bakersfield who gets up to the football. However, as he lands on the football, his chest protector pops it directly out from underneath him and into the awaiting arms of a wrestler. Ahmad Dorsey gets the fumble recovery. We have an injured renegade down on the turf. That football just doesn't do what you want it to do <laughs> sometimes. It bounces and rolls and goes all kind of funny and awkward directions. And for Bakersfield, that was certainly the case that time as it would have been a huge momentum shift for the Renegades coming out of the locker room at halftime, being able to force a turnover there before their defense even had to take the field. And very quickly, while we have an injury timeout, Ed Ford and I were talking about the rankings in the American division, Mount San Jacinto, who is ranked number one in our SportsNetUSA.net rankings in week number two of the SportsNetUSA.net rankings. You look at Mount San Jacinto and what they've done under Coach Mazzota, they are currently not only undefeated, but they are just tearing into some teams, not to mention the fact that they have continually fought against national division opponents and stuck with them as well. So they're ranked number one. That's for no Maui being helped off. Mount San Jacinto, of course, led by Casey Mazzota, one of my personal favorites, former assistant at Fullerton College of the DC there. Part of that Mazzota coaching family. Here's Tavon Valdez. Valdez, the first carry of the second half. And look at Tavon. 25-yard line of Bakersfield. A first down and more for the Rustlers. And that's what you like to see from number 25. You want to talk about a rusher who just put his head down and was running on that right-hand sideline, Tavon Valdez. As soon as he saw a little bit of an opening right up the middle, he takes one cut to his right, and it was daylight. Callbacher in there at quarterback to start this half. There's Tavon again, right up the gut, and he picks up almost five. Give him four there. Up to the 22-yard line, second down. Tavon certainly has that burst. If he can just get a crack, that's what he can do in the open field. It's very good top end speed. There's a second down play. Second and seven. Callbacher looking. Callbacher still with it. Callbacher finds a man close. Oh, and incomplete. Incomplete. Sashi Penn had it. It was Sean Stevens that broke it up. It looked like that was Penn over there that had it. He got upended and couldn't continue the act of making the catch. So it brings up a third down. And you watch how Stevens ends up getting over to Penn. Just undercuts him and it knocks it out. Had that almost assured beautiful catch on that left hand sideline. Kudos to Kalbacher for extending that play. Third and six from the 22. Picked off. Jalen Simpkins, the linebacker. Kalbacher pushes him out of bounds. The second interception of the game for Kalbacher. There's a flag on the play, however. Penalty was against the Rustlers, declined by the Renegades. They'll take over first down and 10. They actually say Simpkins stepped out at the 45 yard line. So that's where this drive will start for Bakersfield. 
Kalbacher now his third interception of the season. Two have come in this game. First and 10, Bakersfield from the Rustler 45 yard line. Ortiz goes in motion, quickly out to him in the flat. That one nearly batted away by Baldwin, and Baldwin, a hustle play, comes from behind and makes the tackle. Tremendous effort there by James Baldwin the third. The flag comes in at the end of that. All of that running that Ortiz did, he probably ran about 20 yards, but only picked up two. Legal block in the back against Bakersfield. Guilty culprit is Jeremiah Thomas, the backup offensive lineman there. So Joshua Ubeda back in there at right guard. Remember, he left in the first half with an injury. That whole right side of the Bakersfield offensive line left with injuries. Ubeda back in there, but no Marshall. As Ortiz is tackled near the 45-yard line. It's Jeremiah Thomas in there, the backup right tackle, replacing Marshall. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Renegades. Second down and 18, Bakersfield from its own 48-yard line. Trips to the bottom of your screen. They send Ortiz out to the top of the screen and go empty. Medina going to let it fly. Ortiz trying to run under it. Can't get there in time. Coos Ford on the coverage. One thing that we have seen from Medina, he does have an arm. <laughs> he just reared back and... Just tossed it into the sky, hoping that a receiver could get to it. I mean, he slung it. Ortiz, maybe not the fastest guy on the team. I think those honors will probably go to Shane Jones. Or I'll take that back. Ortiz may be the fastest guy on this team. If you read some of the press clippings. They go in the flat to Martin. And a nice tackle from behind. That was Justin Parker out of the secondary. Tremendous effort by Parker. Came all the way from the opposite side of the field to make that tackle in the backfield. So the third and long goes for a loss. Brings up fourth down. And the most dangerous punter in California, Carson Olivas, will go back to work. Kicking coach there at Bakersfield, Matt Alvarez, said he's one of the best players to come out of Bakersfield College ever, regardless of position. This young man, the punter, Olivas, who's ready to kick this one away for the fourth time today. And that one nearly blocked. Atencio backs away from it. This one rolling, rolling, rolling. Renegades can't save it from going into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. When you talk about Olivas being a great punter, I mean, that ball hits at the 13-yard line and just starts end over ending its way to the three and two. He's shaking his head in disappointment right there because that, that's going to hurt the net once again. But I could argue these guys maybe could a little bit did a little bit better job of helping them out. But they were hustling down there. They certainly were. You know, he didn't really get notoriety until last year. He was on campus and. You know, you know how kickers get treated, right, Ryan Osborne? I don't have to tell, <laughs> tell you that. And everybody's like, oh, here's just some other guy. And then he booted one about 71 yards in the air, and everybody started to look differently at this guy, like, oh. And then throughout the course of the season, the offense was so inept, he could help them so much by being able to flip the field position. First down play goes to Valdez. Valdez with a crease to the 25. And he stopped at the 27. LJ Early there on the stop. He also had some help from Solario. Spencer Blake with a beautiful block on the right-hand side, though it opens up Valdez for just eight yards. 
Blake, as he ends up pulling out from the left-hand side, going around to the right, he opens a wide lane for Valdez to be able to walk into. 10-18 left in this third quarter. Second down and two for the Rustlers. From the 28, Valdez, and not nearly enough room there. Penetration by Ricky Luang Wai, able to stop Valdez in his tracks. Brings up a third down, and not what you want to see if you're the Rustlers. That's Jacob Beckler being slow to get up. He's going to have to come out for a play because the officials blew the whistle. So he's going to have to come out at least for one play. And Luang Wai is also a little bit slow. So Brett Hawk will come in. He'll do the snapping duties for the Rustlers, it appears. Remember, if you're just joining us, Jacob Beckler and Adrian Montez both, both missed all of practice basically this week. Kobe Clayton missed some time during practice as well. Hawk, the backup center, will come in on third down and five from the 25. Kalbacher, quick out and a tremendous play there on the edge by Richards. And Richards has been getting picked on all day, but he comes up and makes that play there. Stops the Rustlers drive, brings up fourth down. And Rustlers had an easy out pattern off to the right, but Richards anticipates it well, anticipates the pass coming in and takes an explosive first step towards the football. Golden West didn't have a receiver coming back for the ball. So Roberson standing at his 39-yard line. Here's Fisher. Nice kick sends Roberson going backwards, but this one going to take a renegade bounce at the 40 and out at the 41-yard line. 9.21 to play, all knotted up here. Six apiece on SportsNetUSA.net. And Russell football right here on SportsNetUSA.net brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim, where service and parts is open seven days a week for your convenience Located at the 91 and Euclid, make sure you head over to Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Conveniently, you can reach them on the web as well at MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com. Rashawn Haylock, Ryan Osborne, you heard the smooth tunes of one Ed Ford during halftime. Third quarter action here from Ruster Field in Surf City, USA as Medina takes the first down carry on the left side. And Sean Branch, the backup safety up to make the tackle there for the Rustlers after the pickup of three, second down. Second down play. Medina letting it go. Roberson getting airborne and coming down with that one at the 23 yard line. Tremendous catch as he just climbed up and over Cyrus Collins. The explosive play in the passing game has been the rabbit's foot essentially here for Bakersfield this Saturday afternoon and now they go back to the ground. Here's Ortiz dancing, trying to get to the outside, pushed out of bounds by Coos Ford. And that was on a ball that was underthrown as well to the right hand side, but yet Roberson goes up and just bodies away Collins and finally hauls it in for Bakersfield. Jeff Chudy said five, six, and 22 are our best players. We gotta get the ball in their hands somehow, some way. You see why Roberson is so special. Second down and four, and hold everything. And that is the aforementioned Joshua Ubeda, freshman out of Highland, getting called for a false start. The right guard cost the Renegades five to bring up a second down and nine from the 23 yard line. Once again, Bakersfield back into Golden West territory and deep in Rustler territory. 
Here's Medina, going to let it fly again, looking end zone. And PBU there by Coos Ford. It's a little six on six matchup there between Ford and Jones. And Coos got the best of them that time. And you look at that pass breakup, Jones, again, receiver not coming back for the football. And that's why Ford is able to come in and just swat it away as Jones was sitting right next to the pylon waiting for that football to come to him. Approaching seven and a half to play here in this third quarter. Third and nine from the 23. Medina throwing it on the run. Oh, in and out of the hands. Intended target there was Zach Hartsfield, the wide receiver. Only one catch on the season. Could have doubled his total there. That one in and out of his hands. Brings up a fourth down, and DeJager will be back in to try to give the Renegades back the lead. Looking for his third field goal of the game. This one would be his longest of the game. From 29, low snap. Kick is no good, but it's coming back. Rusters jumped offside. And that's going to go against Coos Ford. So the Jager will get another crack at it. It's going to be a 35 yard attempt. The sophomore had only one field goal coming into today. He's now three of three on the season. Looking for his third one on the day. This one. Renegades back on top. So who'd have thought between two teams who normally don't have that much trouble finding the end zone? All of a sudden, you're looking at it as a field goal contest. In case you're just joining us, Renegades got on the scoreboard first with a DeJager field goal. Rustlers didn't get much of anything on their very first possession. They're able to score later in the game and go up six to three on a touchdown from Callbacher to Mouton. Bakersfield answered with another DeJager field goal to tie the game at six apiece after Golden West missed the extra point. And here in the third quarter, Renegades back on top with another DeJager field goal. That one from 34, his longest of the game. Nine to six our score here, 7-23, as the Renegades will kick it off. And Darius Maxwell will take it back pedaling at the two. Maxwell breaks one tackle. Gets it up to the 20 yard line. Last drive for the Rustlers ended in a bowl call Bacher interception, his second of the afternoon. The Rustlers, call Bacher especially, trying to redeem themselves here on this offensive possession and either tie or regain the lead. But Kalbacher won't get the chance at redemption, at least not yet. It'll be Nathaniel Espinoza. So Espinoza in the backfield with Dwayne Roper, the tailback. First and 10 rustlers from their own 21 yard line. Espinoza on the keeper. Taken down by James Thomas after a pickup of one. Very interesting game. Bakersfield coming off of 352 yards on the ground last week has 
made a ton of explosive plays in the pass game. Nathaniel Espinosa, who uses his legs as well as anyone, any quarterback in the SCFA, phenomenal in the pass game so far today for the Rusters. Renegades haven't reached the end zone yet, but they lead nine to six. Espinosa on the run. And Wright had it, nearly intercepted though, however, by Richards. Richards was halfway in between hitting right and catching the interception. And in the process, ball falls to the turf. In hockey, you have the stat that says plus minus. It's when you're on the ice for a goal, on the ice for a goal against. Well, for Richards, it's kind of been that type of day this afternoon. He's been beaten twice on the deep ball and yet made a couple of spectacular plays on the outside against wide receivers. Nine on the play clock. From the 22, third and nine. A Houdini act by Espinosa. Oh, he gets him in in the okie doke. First down and more. If you look closely, that guy's ankles are still back at the 30. And a pickup of the first down. Nearly losing his laundry there was a Bakersfield defender. Didn't quite see who he was, but Espinoza, tremendous run. First down. That was Alex Bolden. Ball at the 32-yard line. First and 10. Here's Roper, high snap. And Espinoza has no choice but to keep this himself. Timing all off on that one. Loses yards on the scamper out of bounds. There have been times you look at this Golden West offense and you feel really good about it. And there have been other times, like at Mesa, like today, where you're just uncertain. Give credit to where it's due. Bakersfield defense, no slouches. They want to win too, folks. Espinosa trying to escape again, but unable to do so. No such trickery that time as the sack was made by Ruben Cruz. Brings up a third and long as we're under five to play here in this third quarter on SportsNetUSA.net. Nine to six, Bakersfield defending tremendously here this afternoon. Holding on to the slight advantage. Six seconds left on the play clock. Russell's got to hurry. Espinosa doesn't even notice it. Two seconds, one second. John Ship has to call a timeout. First charge timeout of his second half for the Rustlers. It comes with 429 to play in the third quarter. As the freshman just not knowing. In high school football, you have the back judge who acts as the play clock, and when he puts an arm up, then that kind of tells you, you know, there's 10 seconds left on the play clock. There is no such luxury here. You only have those play clocks parked in the back of each end zone. You got to pay attention to them if you're the freshman signal caller. He did not notice that at all. The Russells are forced to burn a timeout. And while we have a moment, let us say hello to Mrs. Mitch. Hope your Saturday is going dandy. Thanks so much for tuning in with us here today on SportsNetUSA.net and your support of us tremendously throughout these years. Third and long, Espinosa on the screen, Mouton unable to get away. It's Cruz there once again. Mouton got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain, enter the punting unit. And like you were saying about this offense for Golden West, it's inconsistent. You have big plays that not only start off drives, but also save drives, like the one from Espinosa where he picks up 10 
on a mad scramble, and then all of a sudden, you can't pick up a single yard and get taken back as well with Espinoza trying to run it. Cam Roberson standing on his own 37-yard line. Fisher drops the snap. Pressure not on, though, however, from Bakersfield as they set up a return. Roberson calling for a fair catch and makes it at the 31-yard line. The day started pretty early for Bakersfield. Left their campus at 8.30. Arrived here in Huntington Beach just after 11. Plan is to have a post-game meal here and head right back on the freeway where they're sure to face some traffic going back up to Kern County. Didn't see much of any of it this morning. Especially if you have to go through the downtown Los Angeles area to try and get up there, depending on what freeway you take. 405 or the 5, either way. You're in trouble. And what a move there by Ortiz. Lowers his shoulder and runs absolutely through McCord that time. Close to the first down marker. And there's a rustler down. And I'm, I'm telling you, you, you hear a ton of wind coming through our audio as Coos Ford is able to run off of the field under his own strength. And it's pretty windy. We get a nice breeze in our nice little cozy perch up here high above the 50-yard line. But it was field level is a lot more toastier than it is where we are right now. And they're not getting as much of a breeze. 3.05 left. Second down and one from the 41. Double tight end set for Bakersfield. Ortiz breaks an arm tackle. And I think he might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Heavy pursuit there. Ryan Reigns there. Paka Kakulidis as well. The backup defensive end, as they just strung him out that time. So third and one. Medina runs out. Looked like he was going to give Roberson the play, but instead he's going to split out wide. A little trickeration here on third and one. Wildcat, Ortiz, and Jones back in the backfield. Jones. Readies to take the snap. Does, he runs, he's gonna throw this. And he does to Medina. And just out of Medina's grasp. Wow. Absolute laser of a throw from Jones as well. Coos Ford was over there on the coverage. And I don't think he thought Jones was going to throw that one at all. He basically sold out for the run and was beat by a good five steps. They almost get to that punt again, and that one the worst punt of the day for Carson Olivas. Going to be downed at the 22-yard line. 38 yards. It's right about where his net was a year ago. 38.4 is what it was. 38.2, pardon me. Which was good enough to lead the state in net average. But his goal is to get to that 45-yard mark, which is what they're doing at the D1 level and at the NFL level. One may not seem like a lot, but that's a big gap, 38-45. Seven yards, quite a difference. Callbacher back in there to play quarterback. Sashi Penn takes it on a quick pitch to the outside. Picks up a couple as uh, Solario gets to him. LJ early as well, and Richards picking him up himself up off the bottom of that pile. Going back to that toss by Jones, if you notice, normally, it's a wide receiver running back. He has two gloves on on that play. Only one glove on his left hand, his non-throwing arm.
Normally that's a dead giveaway, right? I, I, I didn't notice it at the time. I'm sure the wrestler staff didn't notice it. Coos Ford certainly didn't notice it as Swain gets the carry up the middle. First down up to the 35 yard line for the wrestlers. I mean, there have been some bright spots. Jonathan Earl has been one of them. He's shown a physicality that you like from an outside receiver. Big and, and using a 6'2", 185 pound frame to get things done in the first half. Hadn't seen or heard much of him so far this season. Swain finds a crease and into the secondary. Taken down at the 44 yard line. Pickup of eight, brings up second down. And Montez is hobbled at the end of that play. If you look at Montez's left ankle, it is heavily taped. As he did not practice this week. Neither did Jacob Beckler, who's back in there after he left on the last drive. Third quarter comes to an end. Bakersfield nine, Golden West six, as you're watching Golden West Russell football on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock, Ryan Osborne here. Want to say hello to long longtime broadcast partner Andrew King, who's at home and chiming in. Appreciate all your notes and thoughts, partner. As Dave, the PA announcer, said during halftime, got ourselves a dog fight, Ryan Osborne. Indeed, and you look at the way that this match is, or this game has shaped up, and you thought, okay, Bakersfield is going to run it, Golden West is going to try and pass it, and both defenses are just going to go at each other. Well, all of a sudden, you're looking at special teams and going, okay, special teams for Golden West? Well, they didn't end up coming through on that extra point. Now it costs them as they're down by three. Bakersfield special teams? three straight field goals that have been converted for the Renegades. So the special teams normally not thought of when you think of a football team, all of a sudden proving to be the entire game this afternoon. Fourth quarter action here. Second and two, wrestlers from their own 44 yard line. Kalbacher, pump, can't throw it. And Bakersfield has doubled their sack output this season. Cruz, Liang Wai combined on the sack there. Holden Williams also got in there as well. Third and seven. Kalbacher over the middle. Atencio, nice diving grab right at the sticks. First down, Golden West. Montez is laboring at left tackle. He's matched up with Holden Williams, a matchup we're going to have to keep an eye on here. Montez having a hard time. Here's Valdez, gets to the outside, turns the corner, Tavon Valdez with some green. Tavon stops, starts, spins. <laughs> He's going to be hauled down at the two yard line. It looked like he may have been on the back of a defender, specifically Jalen Simpkins, and into the end zone. However, they're gonna mark him down at the two. 
And once again, Valdez is that big play guy that Golden West can go to, and they find themselves inside the five yard line for the third time today. Bakersfield's going to call a timeout. We remind you that here on SportsnetUSA.net, Later on today at 6 p.m., it's going to be Fullerton College taking on Southwestern in a pair, in a battle of a pair of three and O teams. Both of them ranked in the top 10 in the SportsNetUSA.net poll. And then at 7 p.m., LA Valley trying to recapture that 2016 magic and get back into the win column. That'll be later on here on SportsNetUSA.net at 7 p.m. So 6 p.m. Fullerton and Southwestern, 7 p.m. L.A. Valley and L.A. Pierce right here on Sportsnet USA.net. 51 yards on that Valdez run. They bring in the money package. Wolf, Retzloff in there as the deep back. Callbacher under center, first and goal from the three. Retzloff on the toss sweep. Bells his way into the end zone. Touchdown! Rosslers! Retzloff, the three yard TD, and Golden West back in front, 12 to 9. Rustlers up by three, go for one here. Kick is up and good by Fisher. Makes it a four point game, so only way for the Renegades to take the lead will be to reach the end zone themselves, something they have not done so far today. But still 12.54 left in this one. That last touchdown set up by the Tavon Valdez run. Yeah, and you look at Tavon Valdez, extremely explosive going up that right sideline. And he just resurrected Golden West. And you had that feeling as soon as Valdez got into the clear, he was taking the Golden West offense with him. We talked about it earlier in the season, and I know you thought I was crazy when I was talking about Tavon Valdez. <laughs> and I was like, if, if he could just get some space. Last week, he got some space. And you're like, oh, it was against West LA. Today, he's found some space. And of come up with a couple of big time runs that last one huge setting up a touchdown as Fisher will kick this one away to the Renegades backpedaling as Roberson in his own end zone takes a knee and the Renegades will take over on their own 25 yard line and while we have a moment let's remind you sportsnetusa.net and Golden West Ruster football here on our network brought to you in part by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. They got all kind of used car specials, new car specials, parts and service seven days a week. What you want, they got located at the 91 and Euclid. Reach out to the fine folks at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Log on on the web, MillerToyotaofAnaheim.com. Here's Medina back to work. First and 10 from the 25. Ortiz getting the carry. And the rustler. Front four holds tough, limiting that carry to just a half a yard. Second down. Second down. And if you're Bakersfield, you have to go back to what got, what got your offense into a rhythm early on, and that is the run. Giving it to Ortiz, giving it to Jones as much as possible. Second and nine from the 26. Medina going to let it fly again up the seam, Roberson, and he overshot him. And that is the fourth overthrow that Medina has had on long balls here today.
Third down and nine. Obvious passing down here for Bakersfield, but the run is their strength. Medina looking for some space. Medina turns the corner at the 30, 35 yard line. And he got enough for a first down before getting out of bounds. Back breaking for this Ruster defense. He needs to get to the 35 and he got out of bounds at the 37. About an 11 yard pick up there. And a first down as we're under 12 to play in this fourth and final period from Rustler Field. Two receivers at the top of your screen. It's Medina, play fake, all kinds of time. Buys more time and hit out of bounds by Paca. Three yard pickup to the 40, brings up second down. For that Rustler's defense, they had a third and nine that they ended up giving up to Medina. And if they can just contain Medina inside of the pocket and force him to try and throw it, it's better for Golden West than allowing him to get to the outside in open space. Huge crowd out here today. Bakersfield brought a large contingent. We weren't sure how many fans we would see clad in red today considering the distance but they came out and supported meanwhile bigger story on the field medina needs to be helped off of the field and he is hobbling barely putting any pressure looks like the right side he's favoring the freshman out of liberty so enter matthew orapesa the backup quarterback matthew orapesa Huge second down play here from the 40. Second and seven, or a Pisa lets it fly. First play, incomplete. Miles McCord on the coverage. To Carlos Frazier, the intended wide receiver, and that was as bright as those jerseys are green, the hold there by McCord against De, De Frazier. That was one of the easier calls that you'll have all afternoon. And once again, it's that penalty flag that comes out and punishes Golden West. Whenever they have momentum, they keep shooting themselves in the foot. And now it's a first down and 10 at the 45 yard line of Golden West. How about Jeff Chudy letting his quarterback air it out very first play? Is Orapisa stepping up this time on the run down the seam and over the head of Jones with another late flag comes in and this one may go against David Aldapa. Should be coincident or offsetting penalties. Two flags on the play. So we'll replay the down. It's a hold on Bakersfield. Late hit against Al Dapper. So we'll replay the down again. Huge reps here for Oropesa. Ortiz tries that right side. And he picks up one. Tackle made there by Jalen Harrington. Never since that second quarter, Ortiz just hasn't been able to find any open space at all. As soon as he gets close to touching the football, you're seeing Al Dapa, you're seeing Retzlaff, who both get on him quick. So here's Oropesa on second and nine from the Rustler 44 yard line. That pocket collapses, trying to buy his time, throws it across the field, Roberson and Coos Ford bats it away. What a 
beautiful job of coverage there by Coos Ford. He ends up twisting his body in midair, and with one hand, his left arm being held back, he reaches up with his right and nearly picks it off with just one hand. It not only keeps the ball out of the end zone, but it shows Golden West that they had a chance at taking the ball away from this driving Bakersfield offense. So here's 39, 39 from the 44. Oropesa in the game, Medina left with an injury and we got a false start. That's Jeremiah Thomas, the backup tackle. And our apologies, that quarterback Jacob Irby, 6'4", 198-pound freshman. Third and 14 now from the 49. Irby steps up. Irby at midfield, fires past the sticks, and it's a first down. Hartsfield makes the catch. We're going to get a penalty call from behind the play. Another roughing the passer penalty charged against the Rustlers. And that's going to tack it on to the end of the throw. So it takes it from the 35, 34 yard line all the way down to the 19. Yeah, at 15 to that play. So first and 10 Renegades from the 19. Jacob Irby off the bench, first snaps of the season. Trying to usher a go-ahead drive here in the fourth quarter at Ruster Field. Medina had been the only other quarterback to register a stat for the Renegades up to this point in the season. 9-17 left. Ortiz gets the carry. Ortiz turns the corner. Ortiz into the end zone. Renegades back on top. It's going to come back. There was a hold on the outside. This one is going to go against Marcus Cornford on the far side. He ends up grabbing two different Golden West defenders and takes them down, holds them by the jersey, and doesn't allow them to get to Ortiz. That'll make it first and 20. So that wipes away the touchdown. And Irby left to try to play hero again. First and 20 from the Ruster 29 yard line. Irby. Irby sacked. Jalen Harrington, the talented stud out of St. John Bosco. Huge loss for the Renegades as this moves them further behind the sticks. You also have to look at the effort there by VJ Malo as Malo is going off to the left of Irby. It forces Irby to take a step back into the tackle of Arrington. Loss of nine on that play. Second and 29, Irby tries to run, Irby. Floats it to the outside and Ortiz just try to get whatever he can over there against the Golden West sideline. A couple, but still a third and long. Goes out of bounds at the 34 yard line. A miscommunication on the Bakersfield sideline. So a third and 24, 742 left in this fourth quarter. Irby, hit as he throws. Irby has a man in zone, incomplete. Off of the hands 
of Frazier. Or Holland, I beg your pardon. And it's going to be a fourth down and long for Bakersfield. And this is where Levis can really make his presence be felt. If he's able to pin Golden West inside of their own 10, it really forces the wrestlers to try and make up a huge drive. Ball security has to be on point here for the wrestlers. Low snap, directional kick there by Olivas. And it bounces at the five, but takes the wrestler bounce up to about the nine yard line where it's down. 7.25 left. I'm sure if Andrew King were here right now, he may be telling all of you at home that it's time for John Ship, Bo Kalbacher and company to Roll out the four-minute offense. Eat some, some clock. And hopefully finish the drive with a score. I could be wrong. And if I am, I'm sure Andrew will correct me. 7.25 left. Rusters will take over first down and 10. At their own 10. Swain is the back. Callbacher out of the pistol. Atencio goes in motion. Looks like it's going to be motion against the Russler offensive line. Now, now you push it back five yards and Golden West is now sitting at their own four and a half. First and 15 from the five. Swain the carry. And Devon Zinn, the defensive lineman, gets in there to make the stop. A pickup of one. Zinn, 6'3", freshman out of Independence High School in Bakersfield. Approaching seven to play. Second and 14 wrestlers from their own six. Callbacher has Ratsliff. He throws it too tall. Ratsliff can't corral it. And that's one Bo, I'm sure, would tell you he wish he could have back. He had him. And that could have been for a big game. It would have been for a first down as well as that ball was tipped at the 21 yard line. And thankfully for the Rustlers, not intercepted. 6.47 left, stops, clock, clock stops with that incompletion. Third and 14 from the six. Kalbacher, flag comes in. Kalbacher fumbles it. Valdez, Johnny on the spot to fall on top of it. Whew. This is going to be a holding once again against Golden West. So that is their fifth holding penalty in this game. Russell's had 18 penalties last week. It's a heavily penalized game, 32 combined. Not helping their own cause here today. Plenty of untimely penalties by the Russell's. Low snap, Fisher gets it off. Takes a rustler bounce. Roberson was trying to keep Ryan Reigns as close as possible. And you look at this Bakersfield sideline, they are thrilled at the fact that they kept Golden West inside of their own five yard line. Now the question is whether or not Golden West can rely on their defense to stop this momentum going Bakersfield's way. Yes, yes, yes. 
So Medina on the sideline. He has ice on the back of his left knee. Irby back in there for his second drive. First full drive, however, first give is to Ortiz on first down. He goes right over that right side and picks up a couple. Five fifty-five left in this fourth quarter. Rustlers thirteen, Renegades nine. Here on SportsNetUSA.net. Second down and six from the 47 yard line of the Rustlers. Irby, Rose, throws, caught, falling out of bounds. Nice grab there by Roberson. Out at the 33 yard line. And another first down for Bakersfield. And that ball was wobbling pretty bad out of the hand of Irby, but yet still enough arm on it to push it across and get that first down. First and 10 from the 33. Irby gonna let it fly. Looking for Jones. Who's four? Picks it off. Intercepted there by Ford. Wow. Big turnover there for the Rustlers and they'll take over. One of the most athletic interceptions that you will ever see. Earlier we talked about Coos Ford nearly getting a one-handed grab. Well, in this case, he does exactly the same thing. He holds off the wide receiver with one hand and brings up his right arm for the interception. And now Golden West. That's the big play they've been looking for against Bakersfield. And all of a sudden, with five minutes left to go, they have a four-point lead and the ball at their own 20. Jeff Chudy not bashful about letting his quarterback, letting it fly. Irby did that time, but Ford was there to pick it off. Here's Valdez on first down from the 20. Picks up two. And the Rustlers is going to try to milk as much of this clock as they can as now Valdez limps off. Second and seven from the 23. Roper back into the game and Roper stuffed. Bolden is there. The initial pursuit, however, was made by Simp Simpkins. He was unable to make the tackle though, but Bolden finished him up. No gain on the play. Huge third down here for the Rustlers. Do you throw it, try to pick up the first down, or do you I think you're trying try to, to milk. milk some clock and you're, keep it on the ground? You're trying to milk as much clock as possible. Bakersfield has two timeouts, in case you're wondering. Callbacher set to let it go to Atencio, incomplete. And Rustler's looking for a flag. Nothing comes in as grabbing Atencio around the collar there was Marks. Certainly got there a little early. I don't know if the, they say it was uncatchable, perhaps? Could be the only explanation there. Instead, it's a fourth down for the Russells with 3.34 to play. But even in the uncatchable situation, that ball is in the vicinity. So, Normally, during uncatchable, you're thinking like 10 yards away. High snap over the head of Fisher. This one in the end zone. Fisher, oh wow, he gets rid of it. Tremendous kick back to the 45 yard line. You kidding me, but Roberson is able to return it to the Rustler 45. Fisher is down in the end zone. I see no flags. Maybe just trying to catch his breath more than anything. I know I certainly am. 
Incredible effort there by the kicker. Ball sailing way over his head. Not only did he retrieve it, but dangerously able to kick it away. A lot of times you see guys, they'll just kick it out of the back of the end zone and take the safety, which the wrestlers could have did. But he got rid of it and he boomed one. You talk about that. He took about a split second to look upfield to see how much time he had, measured it that quickly, and still get a, got it off. So first and 10 Renegades from the Rustler 44-yard line. Irby, last pass was an interception. This pass too tall for his intended target. Looking for corn for at that time. Nice job by Branch there on the coverage. Second and 10. 314 left in this one. Bakersfield fans on their feet. Irby off the bench. Trying to lead a comeback. Gives it to Ortiz. And a nice job of tackling there by the Rustlers. David Aldapa balls out. Ball is out, Rustlers fall on top of it. But they rule him down. They're gonna say that forward progress was stopped. Milo was there to fall on top of the fumble. But they rule Ortiz down. He picked up. Wow, they give him one there. So a third down and nine from the 43. 2.40 left in this fourth quarter. Irby. Buying time. Irby sacked. Paca got there. Had some help also in the form of Steven Cruz. And big number 73, we don't have him on our roster. But he was the first to get there. And another fourth down as we're approaching two to play here in this one. And Olivas have to punt it away on fourth down. Another directional kick. Atencio tells everyone to get away. This one bounces at the 10 and takes a renegade roll up to the three yard line. 145 to play. We got a barn burner here at Rustler Field, Ryan Osborne. Indeed, and you look at Golden West, I mean, what was it, just six minutes ago that we were looking at each other going, okay, where's the big play gonna come from? What's Golden West gonna do? They just got stopped inside of their own 10 yard line. In fact, inside of their own five yard line, and all of a sudden, Golden West comes across with the interception. They come across with a big punt inside of their own end zone and force Bakersfield to have to punt it with under two to go. So Carl Bacher will have to take this snap inside his own end zone. First and 10 from his own four. Valdez the deep back and they give it to Tavon on the stretch and Leon Y is there to take him down. Valdez and, is gonna lose a couple yeah, of yards. A, a big loss there. Bakersfield will take a timeout. Their second charge timeout of the half. They have one left. 139 left in this one. The ball is spotted at the one yard line. So that's a loss of three there by Valdez. Rustlers have two timeouts left in case you're wondering. But Bakersfield just that one timeout. So they can only stop the clock one other time. The goal is to run the clock. Not sure you necessarily want to lose yards. The Russells lose three on that first down play. This is the final non-conference home game for the Rustlers. They'll be at Canyons next Saturday, 6 p.m. kickoff. And we'll have that one for you. More than likely an audio-only broadcast. We'll stick with us right here on sportsnetusa.net for more details. Bakersfield, meanwhile, next week will be at home to take on OCC. 
13-9 the score in this one. Still a whole lot of unfinished business. After the loss of three, it's going to be a second and 13 from the one. And Kalbacher for the first time today going to climb under center. And looks like they just try to pull, push the pile forward to pick up a little bit of breathing room as Kalbacher handed that one off. They had the big package in there. Jalen Harrington, the defensive line when it was in there. I'm not sure if Harrington getting, didn't get the, the carry there. Right. It looked like he did, and he actually went off guard to the right. Nice spot there. Yeah, he picked up maybe a yard. Meanwhile, Bakersfield calls its last timeout of the game. So they have no more timeouts. Big third down play coming up here for the Russers as they lead 13 to 9, 134 left. And I think the bigger question right now for Golden West is. Yeah, you're going to have a running opportunity here on third down from your own one yard line. The question is, what are you going to do on fourth? So they bring in that jumbo package. They call it the money package. Which scored a touchdown earlier today. Ratzloff, the linebacker, is the deep back. Kalbacher under center. They just try to, that right side once again and maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. So that brings up fourth down. 120 left, 32 seconds left on the play clock. So the Russells will let this one go all the way down, you presume, before calling their second time out of the half. It's fourth down and 11. They're going to be able to run it down to the 48 second mark. Ball at the three yard line. Ruster offense on the field. Bakersfield had his special teams unit on the field. They scurry off as the defense scurries on. Rustlers didn't notice the advantage, nor were they trying to take the advantage there. Just content with allowing the play clock to run down and call a timeout with 46 seconds left. 46 and 8 tenths left. Are you not entertained at home, folks? You know what? What a fourth quarter we've had here. We've only seen 22 points scored, but this has been a match or a game that has continually been, as you said, entertaining. There hasn't been a point where there's been a lull in the action. Okay, both of these two teams, they're both trying to run it. Yeah, they're both trying to bleed clock. No, it's gone back and forth. Bakersfield taking momentum. Bakersfield taking a lead when they went up to 9-6. to six. The Rustlers coming back with a big interception. They also got that touchdown earlier to make it 13-9 thanks to that huge run by Tavon Valdez. Both of these two squads just absolutely battling it out here at Golden West College. So the last pump by Fisher was an eventful one. Ball sailed directly over his head. He had to save it in the end zone and then get it off. A safety not out of the question here for the Rustlers. Up by four here. And that's exactly what he's gonna do. So Fisher takes the safety. With 44 and 6 tenths left. So that'll make the score 13 11. And the Russells will be forced to either kick or punt it away and force Bakersfield to cover even more ground. The problem is a field goal wins it. Which but they have much shorter distance to go to. And what that also means is that you have to take a look at prior performance by the kicking staff of Bakersfield College. 
they've already connected on a 35-yard attempt here this afternoon. So if you're Golden West, that means that you have to make sure that you keep them away from at least the 20-yard line. So this one will be kicked off from the 20. Ortiz and Roberson standing on their own 15. And Nick Mitchell hoping Fisher can get a leg into this one. And he booms it. Sends Roberson backpedaling inside the 10, takes it at the eight. Roberson collides with Perez near the 40 yard line. So DeJager's long on the season is from 34, he did that today. So that means they would have to get to about the 17 yard line or so. And maybe about the 20. To give him a chance if that's his distance. Reminder that Bakersfield does not have a timeout to call. Irby first and 10 from the 43. Bakersfield. First play is a pass, it's caught. But unable to get out of bounds there is the receiver, Cooper. 25 seconds and ticking here. Irby looking over to the sideline for a play. Second down now from the 48. Second and five, Irby. Irby sacked. Gets rid of the ball. Recovered by the rustlers. Is there a fumble or is it intentional grounding? Should be intentional grounding. Two flags on the play. I agree with you, it should be intentional grounding. But look like the officials let that play out and did not blow the play dead after Irby tried to get rid of it. Meanwhile, there's only four seconds left in this game. Here's the ball game. 10 second runoff because of the intentional grounding. Rustlers win. 13 11, your final. Wow. That about sums it up. <laughs> and we talked about the play calling going into the half in which Bakersfield had two minutes and two seconds to march up field but decided to allow the clock to run down. Here with 47 seconds left to go, they have that pass that gets caught at the 48 yard line. But if you notice them getting to the line, they weren't as quick to get up to the line of scrimmage and get another playoff. So all of a sudden, once Irby drops back into the pocket, by the time he receives the football, He's sitting there with only eight seconds left to go. As the clock continued to run down, he moves back and with 4.1 left to go, he ends up throwing it to the floor for the intentional grounding and the 10 second runoff finishes off the game. Rustlers 13, Renegades 11. We'll be right back to wrap this one up from Rustler Field. You're watching Golden West Rustler Football on sportsdayusa.net. Thirteen, eleven, our final here at Rustler Field as Golden West goes level on the season, improving to two and two on the year, picking up its first win over an upper division team on the season. As we're joined now by linebacker coach Chris Redfern and Chris, your defense was really put to the test. Yes, put sir. Put in some situations here today where they had to step up, and they did, namely on this last drop. Yes, we really. Uh, We've been hurting on the turnovers. We've been trying to get them the last couple of weeks and really emphasizing that. And 
uh, Justin Ford really came up with that big one in the end zone there for us to get it going. And then our defensive line touring it up there at the end, getting into his face when we knew they were going to pass. Uh, this was a tough physical team. We were expecting it to be a battle all the way throughout, and our guys really stepped up this week, worked hard all week long, and we were ready to go. I know Coach Mitchell works with the DBs. You work with the linebackers. Mm -hmm. But Koos showed some athleticism today oh, yeah. that I hadn't really seen. That one PBU that he had where he went up with one arm and batted it away and then yeah. the interception in the end zone. What can you say about him today? Man, that guy's a stud. He's long, fast. He can run. He brings it every single day. It was really nice to see him make that play. He went up, looked like a receiver in there, and that's exactly what we're talking about all the time. When the ball's in the air, it's your ball just as much as his. Go up and get it. And that's exactly what he did. I know you don't want to keep putting yourselves in these situations, but when your defense has been pinned up against the wall, these goal-to-goal -goal situations. They've come up with stops and forced teams to have three or nothing. Mm -hmm. That was the case today. That was the case last week against West L.A. You don't want it to happen, but when it happens, I mean, how much confidence does that give you in the group? Oh, so much confidence in these guys. We know that when they really need to step up, they're going to do it, even when we got our backs up against the wall. Uh, you never hope it happens, but we've had some special teams issues on times or a bad pick or something where we end up backed up, and those guys have always stepped up each and every game, it seems like. Hey, go enjoy this one. Thanks, Thanks for man. stopping, Chris. Appreciate talk it. To you later. It's Chris Redfern, linebackers coach here for your Golden West Rustlers. Rustlers win it 13-11 to here to improve to 2-2 two and two on the season. Bakersfield falls to 2-2 two and two on the year. Each team with just one non-conference game left on their respective slates. Next week, the Rustlers will be at College of the Canyons to wrap up the non-league portion of their schedule. It was Austin Cooper getting in there for that last sack. And it was a intentional grounding against Irby. Irby, the freshman quarterback, put in a tough situation, called on off the bench, and Ford asked to deliver a, a come-from-behind effort for the Renegades. Keep in mind, this is a Renegade staff that had a huge quarterback battle. It was five guys in the battle. Really, really high contested battle. It ended up being just two guys left. It was Medina who we saw and also Braden Wingle who we did not see. We thought he would be the backup. Instead it was Irby. Irby gave it a valiant effort but that wrestler defense, kudos to them, Ryan Osborne. 13 to 11 our score here. As we'll hear from Ryan in, in, in the days to come. Wrestlers win it 2 to Rushers win it 13 to 11. They improved to 2 and 2. Renegades fall 2 2 and 2. Special thanks to Nick Mitchell, as always, for all of his help and assistance. Brandon Ursery, the SID over there for Bakersfield College. And of course, all of you at home for watching. For my partner, Ryan Osborne, Ed Ford, man in the controls. I'm Rashawn Haylock saying thanks so much for watching. You've been watching Golden West Russell Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Russell's win 13 to 11.